stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Welcome to today's program. We're going to have such a good time today as I do our recap of everything we've seen in the previous eight programs. We have covered a lot of territory. We've talked about the rapture of the church, the trumpet that's going to sound, the voice of the archangel. We've talked about what's going to happen to us physically during the rapture. Our bodies are going to be modified, even transformed. And then we've also studied all the events that are going to occur leading up to the rapture, what's going to happen during the rapture, and what's going to happen following the rapture. We have covered a lot of material in eight programs, and I feel the need today for us to recap everything that we have studied. Then tomorrow, I'm going to be teaching you about how we personally need to respond to make sure that apostasy does not affect us. The Bible clearly says that a mutinous attitude is going to develop in society at the end of the age. Are we seeing a mutinous attitude today? My friends, the world is in a state of revolt. They're revolting against every form of authority. You know, when I was a young boy, I used to read Peter's words in 2 Peter, and I always wondered what he meant. And Peter said, in the end of the days, people will be like brute beasts, and they will rail authorities. I always thought that was such rude language. But you know, now it's pretty obvious that he was talking about People today are railing authorities. If you are a president, if you're a governor, a mayor, if you're a pastor, if you're a parent, if you're a school teacher, if you are anyone in any position of authority today, you're subject to attack. That's the truth. People today generally at large rail authorities. There's a general rejection of authority of every kind, and people are even rebelling against and revolting against their gender. <laughs> Can you imagine rebellion on such a level that people are rebelling against their birth gender? We're living in a day that the Bible calls lawlessness. From the word anomia, the word nomos describes law, if you put an A on the front of it, it's the cancellation of a law, a day when people do not want to be told what to do, what to believe. They want to believe what they wish. And Isaiah tells us in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, at the very end of the age, people will become so confused, they will look at evil and they will say, that's good. Then they'll look at good and they'll call that evil. They will be confused between darkness and and light. My friends, we are living in that age. That's the age that we are living in. Oh, it's amazing. Now, some people say, oh me, oh my, what are we going to do? It seems like things are getting worse. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. We are the church of the living God. If the world sinks all around us, we're not going to sink. Remember, when the flood came upon the earth, the world was swept away in a flood, but the same flood that brought destruction caused Noah's ark to rise higher and higher and higher, and Noah sailed and floated on the waters of destruction. We as the church are God's ark, and we're going to float even on waters of destruction. God's power will lift us above it all. That's why the Bible tells us we have a faith that overcomes the world. I like to translate it, we have a faith that overrides the system. It doesn't matter what's happening in the world under us. We have a faith that causes us to be above it all. We just need to know how to use our faith and how to protect ourselves. And that's why I want you to have my brand new book, which is called Last Days survival guide. The foreword is written by Perry Stone. How I appreciate Perry Stone, an intelligent teacher of the Word of God. But this book will be a blessing to you. Last Day's Survival Guide. The subtitle is a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. Do you believe we're living in perilous times? Listen to this. The Holy Spirit warned us, I'm reading from the back of the book, that perilous times would come at the very end of the age. Why are we surprised? The Holy Spirit told us in that time frame that we're living in right now, it is imperative that we know how to survive victoriously. 
In this eye-opening survival guide, you will learn what the word perilous really means. You will learn what exact characteristics will mark society at the very end of the last days. You will learn what actions you need to take to protect yourself and those you love. You will learn how to stop the strategies the devil's trying to use to attack you and your loved ones. This is a survival guide. My friends, I believe that you need this book and I want you to order your copy today. And please order more than one because I know I am certain this is a book you're going to want to share with somebody else. You can order yours right now by going online or you can call us to place your order. And right now we're also offering you my series called The Coming of the Antichrist. It's 10 parts comes in multiple formats. We need to know what the Bible says about the near future. My friends, all of this is right in front of us. As soon as the church is evacuated, this evil individual is going to appear on the world stage. We need to preach the gospel to our friends, our neighbors, our loved ones, because we don't want them to be left because when the church is removed, evil is going to flood into this earth. The church is God's restraining force. And if that restraining force is lifted out of the picture, as will occur in the very near future, suddenly there will be nothing to hold back the flood of evil, and evil will flood into the earth, and a man of evil will step forward called the Antichrist. We need to know what the Bible teaches, and I guarantee you this will fuel your fire to make sure your family, your friends, and your loved ones know Jesus Christ. And it comes with a great study guide. Now remember, God never tells us anything to scare us. He just wants to equip us and to prepare us. You need this series. Amen. But today, I want to read to you from 2 Thessalonians chapter 4 from the King James Version. I'm going to give you a recap of everything we have already studied. In 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul says this in verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, amen, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. We covered all of that in previous programs. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Teachings about the rapture should comfort you, not scare you. Jesus is coming for us. But hold on. I want to go over again the RIV of these verses. You say, what is the RIV? It is Renner's Interpretive Version. It is a conceptual translation of the New Testament, which I'm working on. Listen to this. The RIV, beginning in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15. For we declare this to you by the word of the Lord, those who are physically alive and who have survived everything. I'm talking about the remaining remnant that will still be left around at the time of the coming of the Lord. It indicates there may not be many. There will be a remnant. That living and surviving remnant will not precede those who have already died. Then in verse 16, here's the RIV. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a mighty military command. The King James Version says with a shout, but in Greek it is a military word which describes the voice of a commander which summons all the troops to action. So here's the translation. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a mighty military command that will rouse the saints and galvanize God's troops to action. And along with that command, at that time will also be heard the immense voice of an archangel along with the blast of God's war trumpet. This word trumpet that is used in this verse described a war trumpet. And this particular war trumpet was always blasted at the outset of a military to campaign to announce that the battle had commenced and to announce that they would be the victors. So here I've translated it. Along with the blast of God's war trumpet to signal that the final battle, ultimate victory and vanquishing of all of God's enemies is about to occur. That war trumpet blast 
will be the indication that God's enemies have lost their long-standing battle with him and that he reigns victorious and supreme in total victory. And exactly when that war trumpet sound goes forth, the dead in Christ will immediately stand upright on their feet as they are resurrected to a brand new resurrected royal status. This resurrection will take place as a first priority before the next sequence of events takes place. And then you come to verse 17. Then at that exact synchronized moment, that's really what the Greek says, then at that exact synchronized moment, those who are still physically alive and who have survived everything, I'm talking about the remnant that will still be around and left remaining at this time. They will suddenly and supernaturally be snatched away out of imminent danger just in the nick of time as the Lord instigates a divine rescue operation to transfer, transport them into the clouds to join those who have been resurrected. The Greek word that is used here indicates a deliverance or a rescue operation in a very dangerous moment, which means the rapture may occur at a moment when we feel that we are surrounded by peril. That's probably what it means. So let me read it to you again. They will suddenly and supernaturally be snatched away out of imminent danger just in the nick of time as the Lord instigates a divine rescue operation to transport them into the clouds to join those who have been resurrected first. There in the air's lower atmosphere where the Lord has descended to meet them, those who were raised from the dead and the remnant who was supernaturally snatched out of danger will encounter the Lord. And at that encounter, the Lord will roll out the red carpet to give the new arrivals a royal reception to match the VIP status he knows they deserve. Then thereafter, we will always at all times and forevermore be with the Lord. You see, the King James Version says, we'll meet the Lord in the air. That word meet describes a grand reception given to welcome officials and royal arrivals. That's who we will be in the rapture. Jesus is going to give us a VIP reception. Then in verse 18, Paul says, So then encourage, exhort, positively provoke, rouse, stir up, and spur one another on with these words. Do your best. Make it your aim to help each other to stand tall, to throw your shoulders back, to hold your head high, and to bravely face every battle or circumstance that presents itself to you. And yes, make it your goal to encourage one another with the words that I have written unto you. So these words about the rapture should really encourage us. But wait, then I want to read to you from the King James Version, Paul's words about the rapture in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Oh. I am so blessed by what we've been studying. I pray that it's been a blessing to you. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52, Paul says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, which means there is a generation that will not die. But we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised in corruptible. Well, how should that be translated? I'm going to give you a translation. Here is the RIV of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. What I'm about to say will totally flabbergast you, but listen carefully. For I'm going to tell you something that was previously an unknown mystery, but has been revealed to us. Here it is. All will not die, but all the dead and even the living will be miraculously transformed and transfigured. Then in verse 52, here's the RIV of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. In a second, a split second, even in an indivisible atom of time, as fast as the twitch of an eye, at the very last trump, that war trumpet will loudly sound a signal that the final battle, ultimate victory, 
and the vanquishing of all of God's enemies are about to finally happen. That blast will be God's way of letting everyone know that his enemies have lost their footing and long-standing battle with him and that he reigns victorious in supreme and total victory. And in a flash, the dead will stand upright on their feet and will be resurrected to a brand new resurrected royal status. And at that exact moment, they will miraculously receive new bodies that are incapable of decay and that will never again show the effects of wear, tear, and age, timeless, immortal, indestructible bodies. And we who are still alive when all of this happens, we will be changed as our old bodies are supernaturally transformed for new ones that are also incapable of decay and we will never again show the effects of wear, tear, and AIDS. We will literally be transformed to have timeless, immortal, and indestructible bodies. Now that is just amazing. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you have Paul's very vivid teaching about the rapture of the church. These verses are simply undeniable. And when someone tells you that there is no rapture, they're ignoring very important verses in the New Testament. But hold on. When you come to 2 Thessalonians, Paul begins to comment on the events that are going to occur up to the rapture, what's going to occur during the rapture, and after the rapture. So let me read to you what the King James Version says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Then I'm going to give you the RIV. Listen to this. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, here's what the Bible says. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's talking about the coming of Jesus for the church. We know that because then he says, and by our gathering together unto him, when Jesus will quickly gather the church together for himself at the end of the age. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you all these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity already works. Only he who now lets will let until he be taken out of the way. That's talking about the church being raptured. And then, verse 8, that wicked one shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth that had pleasure in unrighteousness. Well, that's a lot of King James. So let me give you the RIV of these verses. And I think you're simply going to love what you're about to hear. Listen to this. 2 Thessalonians Chapter 2, verse 1, here's the RIV. Brothers, listen carefully. Don't you like that, brothers? Brothers, listen carefully. For I'm asking you in the strongest of terms to hear what I'm about to say and to do exactly what I'm asking you to do. The appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ is very near. The moment we have all longed and waited for is almost upon us. I'm talking about that moment when Jesus will finally gather us together for himself. Verse 2. Some things will be happening right before his coming that could shake you up quite a bit. Does that describe the day we're living in right now? Some things could be happening that will shake you up quite a bit. I'm referring to events that will be so dramatic that they could really leave your head spinning. Occurrences of such a serious nature that many people will end up feeling alarmed, panicked, intimidated, and unnerved. Naturally speaking, 
These events could put your nerves on edge and make you feel apprehensive and insecure about life. I wish I could tell you these incidents were going to be just a one-shot deal, but when they finally get rolling, they're going to keep coming and coming one after another, and that's why you've got to determine not to be shaken or moved by anything you see or hear. You need to get a grip on your mind and refuse to allow yourself to be traumatized by these events. If you let these things get to you, it won't be too long until you're a nervous wreck. That's why you've got to decide beforehand that you're not going to give in and allow fright to penetrate its way into your mind and emotions until it runs your whole life. I also want to tell you not to be too surprised if people start making weird spiritual proclamations and off-the-wall utterances during that time just before the Lord comes. All kinds of strange things are going to happen in those days. It's going to get so bizarre that you might even receive a letter from some person who claims the day of the Lord has already come. Who knows? They might even attach our name to it, alleging to have our endorsement, or they might send it as if it were written and sent from us. Then he says in verse 3, In light of these things, I urge you, to refuse to let anyone take advantage of you. For example, you won't need a letter to tell you when the day of the Lord has come. You ought to know by now that this day can't come until first. A worldwide insurgency, rebellion, riot, and mutiny against God has come about in society. Once that occurs, the world will be primed, prepared, and re ready to re-embrace the man of lawlessness, the one who hates law and has rebellion running in his blood. This is the long-awaited and predicted son of doom and destruction, the one who brings rot and ruin to everything he touches. When the time is just right, he will finally come out of hiding and go public. Verse 4, do you understand who I'm talking about? I'm describing that person who will be so against God and everything connected with the worship of God that if you can imagine it, he will even try to put himself on a pedestal above God himself, sitting in God's rightful place in the temple and publicly proclaiming himself to be God. Then I'm going to jump right to verse 6. Now, in light of everything I've told you, you ought to be well aware by now there is a supernatural force at work that is preventing the materialization of this person and the disclosure of his identity. This restraining force I'm referring to is so strong that it's currently putting on the brakes and holding back the unveiling of this wicked person, stalling and postponing his manifestation. But when the right moment comes, the evil one will no longer be withheld and he will emerge on the world scene. The screen that's been hiding his true identity and guarding him from worldview will be pulled back and evaporate and he will step out on center stage to let everyone know who he is. Verse 7, these events have been covertly in the making for a long time, but the world doesn't realize a secret plan is being executed right under their own noses. The only thing that has kept this plan from already being consummated is the supernatural force that's been holding it back until now. But one day this force, that's the church will be removed from the picture. And when that happens, these events will quickly transpire. The removal of this restraining force, that's us, will signal the moment when the lawless one will finally make his grand appearance to the world. And not too long after that, the Lord will come and his coming will be so grand, so glorious, so overwhelming. He will totally obliterate the lawless one by the mere breath of his mouth. Just one puff from the Lord and this evil person will be incinerated. Verse 9, this evil one will be energized by Satan himself as he makes his arrival known to the world with all kinds of dynamic supernatural powers that will be truly extraordinary. These lying signs and wonders and supernatural feats have only one purpose. They're designed to draw attention to him and to make the world stand in awe of him. He'll do anything to seduce people, exploiting them with illusions, tricks, and all kinds of unrighteousness that are designed to deceive and seduce the masses. Listen to verse 11. 
Because they chose to reject the truth, God will send delusion and error into their midst, compelling them to believe the lie that's being offered to them by the Antichrist. Verse 12, God will send a delusion among these truth rejectors. They could have accepted the truth and believed, but they made the willful decision to participate in and fully enjoy their unrighteous deeds. So in the end, they'll be thoroughly judged and condemned by their own actions because they gave themselves so entirely to the enjoyment of wrongdoing, there will be plenty of evidence to use against them in God's court of law on the day they stand before him to be judged. My friends, that is a lot. That's a lot that I've shared with you today. That is the RIV of these powerful verses in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And the Bible states these things because the Holy Spirit believed we needed to understand what is coming in the future. You don't need to be afraid of the future if you know what the Bible teaches. But hey, I'm out of time. We'll be back in just a moment. Remember that tomorrow I'm going to be teaching you what we need to do to guard ourselves against this mutinous attitude that's going to be developing in the world at the end of the age. But I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. People often talk about the coming of Jesus, but once Jesus has raptured the church, the Bible says the Antichrist will be revealed to the world. In one split second, the Antichrist will come out of hiding and go public. In the 10-part series, The Coming of the Antichrist, Rick Renner delves into this end time subject like you've never heard it before. Based on 1 Thessalonians, Rick explores verses that can be difficult, making them easy to understand. Since we are living in the end of the ages, we need to know what is coming in the near future. If you are interested in what the Bible says about the future, then this is one series you need to digest. Rick answers, who is the Antichrist? What will he be like when he shows up? When will he be revealed to the world? What is stopping him from being revealed right now? Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $20, you'll be so glad you invested in this powerful series. In addition, you can order Rick Renner's book, Last Day Survival Guide. This spectacular book will awaken you to the times we are living in and will equip you to sail through these times successfully. We are in the last days. You and I need to know how to thrive in this last day's environment. This is one book you must have. Right now, you can get Last Day Survival Guide for just $25 wherever books are sold, in stores and online, or by going to renner.org. Don't delay ordering your copy today. And don't miss this powerful teaching series. Call the number on your screen now or go online to order. It has been such a pleasure to share these verses with you today. The Bible is amazing. Just think about God's love and concern for us that he wanted us to understand everything that is in the near future. And that's why I want you to order my brand new series called The Coming of the Antichrist. It's 10 parts. It's everything in these programs plus more. And it comes with a great study guide. And I want you to get my brand new book called Last Days Survival Guide. You got to get your boots in your Bible. Get ready to march through these end times. My friends, we can do it if we have the Word of God. We have all the equipment that we need. We just need to know how to do it. And that's why I've written this book called Last Days Survival Guide, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. Order your copy today. You can do it by going online or call us right now. But Father, I'm so thankful for the Bible. Lord, as we conclude the program today, I'm just amazed that you have told us so much about the near future. We don't need to worry. We don't need to fret because you've told us clearly everything that is in front of us. We thank you for loving us so much that you wanted us to be informed. In Jesus' name, amen. Receive the peace of God. And remember Ecclesiastes 8, 4, where the word of a king is, there's power. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at runner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.